So tornadoes are associated with thunderstorms, and most of the violent tornadoes come from supercell thunderstorms because they have these very strong updrafts in excess of 150 miles per hour. And also because they're a little longer lived, uh, they have more time to spawn tornadoes. So some of the characteristics of a supercell formation are listed here. Um, first off, in the horizontal winds, and we'll see a diagram of this in just a moment, we have shear, and this can be speed shear, which means as we're looking at horizontal layers of winds, that one layer, like an upper layer perhaps, is moving faster than a lower layer, that is speed shear. Directional shear is when you have one layer of horizontal winds moving in a different direction than an underlying layer. So shear can be because of speed differences or directional differences of winds when you look at them horizontally. And what happens is this causes air to rotate around a horizontal axis. And we get these strong updrafts that, in, that bump into this horizontal rotating axis of air or tube of air, and it can push that rotating air vertical. And once that happens, we get what's called a mesocyclone formed within this big supercell. So let's take a look at this. Here we're seeing shear. So if we're looking at um, what's happening with the winds, we've got higher winds aloft here and lower winds. And you see these surface winds are blowing from the southeast, where the upper air winds are blowing from the west and faster. So we've got wind shear and you can imagine um, if you roll something between your hands and your hands are moving in opposite directions it's going to cause uh, a, a spiral to form like you see here. When we get a big updraft meeting that spiral it can push that spiral upwards and we start to get a rotation, a counterclockwise rotation, low pressure. These storms are associated with low pressure. And then here's the development of a full-blown mesocyclone. So you see a gigantic uh, supercell cumulonimbus cloud right, with the anvil shape touching at the tropopause up here. And then the mesocyclone, which was that uh, rotating column of air that turned vertical and uh, very strong winds in here. And you see this is, the, um, this is the, the wall cloud that gets formed, this dark kind of shaft that you see around the, the red spiral. This is the wall cloud. And you'll see this at the surface. We saw that in the picture from the last lecture where I showed the uh, photograph of a supercell. You see kind of this ominous um, mesocyclone that shows the rotation happening. It's kind of extending from the bottom. And this mesocyclone also extends beyond the top of the cloud. It's called an overshooting. So it actually pops through the tropopause and into the stratosphere a little bit. So very powerful winds. And to look at what's going on here, um, the, the cloud in general right, has its inflow. So this is the inflow portion of the cloud. And then you can see the cloud is also having its downdrafts come out here and we've got the maximum amount of our precipitation happening over here on the right hand side as we're looking at this cloud at this storm so the predominant winds are blowing this way and so east of the of the storm is where we're going to see most of the heavy precipitation the rain free base of the cloud is going to be right over here on the western portion of the cloud so right where this downdraft is you would expect to see some precipitation but nope it's all over on this side and then the tornado itself, if it's touched down to the ground, uh, we're going to see it right coming down from this wall cloud, right where the mesocyclone is. Here is a schematic view of a supercell thunderstorm. So again, we've got our wall cloud here that's defining the boundary of the mesocyclone inside of this monster cloud of this monster storm. Here's the tornado touching down on the ground. Um, we've got our heavy precipitation over here on the over here on this portion of the cloud and you can see uh, higher up we've got the main portion of the storm is right over where the heaviest precipitation is we may see mamatas clouds 
and we've got our rain-free base area here so just another view of, uh, of a supercell with a tornado and then here's a plan view of a tornadic supercell with a popular hook shape that shows up on Doppler radar and makes it possible to identify these supercells that are likely to have mesocyclones and produce thunderstorms. So look at the scale here. This is 10 miles. So this is uh, just the size of a supercell. Here's our anvil edge. We're seeing the big top of the cloud here, the, the anvil spread out at the tropopause. And then uh, we've got the dry portion of the, of the tornado or of the supercell over on this side and most of the precipitation happening over on this side. And you can see where the tornado is right at that hook and we've got the if we're going to have hail it'll vary in size with the biggest hail being closest to the tornado and then uh, becoming smaller hail heavy rain and then lighter rain the further out we go so we've got this hook pattern that we look for in our radar imagery and here's some radar imagery from a storm from may 1999 from moore oklahoma and it shows on the left the radar image. So you see this hook shape that alerts meteorologists to a supercell that's likely to spawn tornadoes. So where and when? Here's a map that shows the average number of tornadoes uh, between 1999 and 2008. So there's an area of the United States here called Tornado Alley, which is kind of right in this area here where we get the most tornadoes and it has to do mainly with uh, mid-latitude cyclones that come across and where we get that intensification of maritime tropical air meeting the colder um, polar air and that clash of uh, not just temperatures but moisture causing uh, strong thunderstorms that are likely to produce tornadoes. So you can see for us over here in Arizona we don't really get too many tornadoes. It's not really an issue. They can happen. They can happen anywhere but um, much more likely to happen in the Midwest and the South. I grew up in Indiana and tornado warnings were a regular event during the summer. So you're always listening for the tornado sirens to go off and that alerts you to uh, seek shelter. And hopefully you have a basement or someplace safe that you can go and um, kind of ride out the storm. I have been in a couple of tornadoes. One was in Colorado. I was traveling, staying at a hotel and there was a tornado that was about uh, less than 10 miles away. Um, hail, and it was nighttime when the, when the thunder would, uh, or the lightning would light up the sky. You could see the, the mesocyclone touching down the tornado off in the distance. It was pretty scary being stuck in a hotel uh, that didn't have a basement and no real, no real place to stay that was safe. Fortunately, it didn't cross my path. It stayed you know, far enough away to it didn't cause damage. So it did knock the tops off of a few trees in the, um, in the area right around the hotel. The Fujita scale is a way of measuring the intensity of a tornado. And there are several links here that I'll include in the additional links section on Blackboard. So you can take a look at these and understand more about the scale and how tornado damage is assessed. Some of the hazards obviously extremely high winds they can blow down structures you've seen this I mean tornadoes always make the news they used to tell you to keep your windows open because pressure differences tornado is a very low pressure storm and if you have a tornado coming by it's possible if you have your house all closed up that the windows might blow out as the as the air tries to move from the high pressure inside your house to the low pressure which is the tornado cell but now uh, they say that's not such a good idea. Doesn't matter, I mean, houses are not hermetically sealed. So just leave the windows closed and don't worry about it and seek shelter. So uh, we also have strong updrafts that literally can carry you away, that carry things up into the tornado and carry them away to Oz. Some tornadoes actually have more than one vortex. So it's multiple tornadoes that are kind of spinning around each other. And of course, these are going to be the most destructive type of tornado.